taking of the cork off, placing the cork on the table, sure. etc. So, is there any value in the whole ritual of smelling the cork? Mm. Um, the cork isn't necessarily supposed to be smelled. <laughs> It's um, it's more for you to be able to take and feel and examine the cork. Um, so one of the things that you can find when you when you take and look at the cork that's been pl placed on the dinner table mm -hmm. is you can see if um, if it's colored with wine all the way at the end. If it is, then there's a chance that wine that the wine might have been baked a little bit, like it would have been in a 90 degree room. The mm -hmm. wine would have expanded and then would have been forced out the top. Mm -hmm. And if that happens, then typically it's going to be a sign that your wine's probably not as good as it could be. Okay. Um, so it was improperly stored at some point in the along the line there. Um, so this particular one is made from uh, Nebbiolo grapes. Um, it is something that kind of like a, a, like a Barolo and a Barbaresco is is a pretty a pretty big wine typically, but it still has a lot of nuances with it. Um, great with like any kind of shank you want to throw at. If you want to uh, make some Osibuco, that would be absolutely lovely here. Red sauce. Yeah, that one's got a lot of, like smokiness to it in the Good in call. the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, like, where does that come from? Um, so the smokiness uh, can, is typically going to be uh, a property that comes from the wine barrel. Okay. So when um, when the people who craft the oak wine barrels um, when they're working on it, they uh, they will add put it over a flame and, and maybe add a little smoke to it. Um, okay. They'll uh, uh, toast it a certain way. And so the, the people who produce the oak barrel are trying to get certain properties to be um, in the oak already and ready to go so that they, when okay. uh, a winemaker puts the wine in the barrel, it will be it will have some of those great expressions of, of uh, a great, uh, a really well-made oak barrel. Interesting. Do they reuse those barrels? Uh, they do. Often they do. Uh, so uh, wine barrels can be new or they can be used. When they're new, then they give off a lot of those oak properties. So the smokiness or vanilla or kind of cigar box, fresh tobacco, leather, some of those properties that you'll, that you'll find in the wine typically come off of a, a new oak barrel that hasn't been used before. Yeah. Now, um, there are also used oak barrels. So a wine that's uh, a wine barrel that's been used the previous vintage or for a couple vintages. And what if a wine is made and, and aged in a, in a used wine barrel, what you'll find is that it doesn't have as many of those properties that you might find, the vanilla, et cetera. And it's more of a true expression of the grape. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Definitely smoky. Okay. Definitely Good. smoky. All right. Good. <laughs> and again, it's got some of that leathery component. The the fruits are still a little tightly wound. They're not really at their full expression right now. But um, but for ten dollars, hard to complain about. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's move to the last one. What do we have, Miss Beasley? The last bottle is a Ribera del Duero. And this is a $12 bottle from uh, this appellation is northern Spain. Another very dry red. And you call this one bolder. This this is typically a little bit bolder. Now, this particular wine is made from 100% Tempranillo. So uh, wines from this region are, um, well, Rioja is what we think of when, when we think of wines from around this region. So. Rioja is also made from Tempranillo. It's a phenomenal pairing with um, uh, with paella and with uh, with grilled meats, etc. So um, essentially, it is going to be one of those wines that uh, that is much like its very close neighbor, but at a much lesser price because no one really knows about it. Okay. Um, it's something that you will find in Spanish restaurants. Um, but outside of that, you really rarely see this wine. Now, these wines can be anywhere from $9 to, I've seen them as high as like $22 before as well. 
And again, sloppy pour. <laughs> um, so this is a darker wine even than the last. It is. Very dark purpley. Mm -hmm. And I hear that wine has legs, but <laughs> I think it's, Not I like think yours. you're pretending. <laughs> Any wine? Now, this particular wine is a lot more expressive than the others. Um, it seems like it's um, definitely um, a little bit bolder, I think, in stature. Um, eucalyptus is one of those crazy notes that I'm just picking up that's, mm -hmm. um, that's kind of crazy. It's not, it's not something that we really um, see very often, but uh, it's something I'm definitely getting here. What do you think you'd pair with it, Crystal? I haven't tasted it yet. <laughs> uh, grilled meat and uh, paella. There we go. It's paella. Wafting, smells of paella or wafting through the building, building for the of you who are not here. Yeah, it's tempting to say um, with that aroma, and I, I see a nice little plate of paella right there. Um, it's tempting to say that everything will pair, pair well with paella. <laughs> <laughs> paella jam. There we go. I don't find this one to be as puckery as the last. It's not mm -hmm. as bitter. Yeah, this definitely seems to be a little bit more fruit forward. Um, it seems to be just ready to go, like it's it's just ready to be consumed immediately, mm -hmm. which I'm, I'm okay with. I'm okay I know with you that. all need a, another three hours before you can consume the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Is it just yeah. three hours now? Yeah, it, we it's, should be getting it's close. It's just three hours. Mm. Really? What? Two hours and 45 minutes. Nice. Wow. wow. Under That's three hours. awesome. Yeah. So, um, so... This is something where, um, yeah, again, really fruit forward, ready to drink immediately, um, which is nice for a 2007 to, to find something on the shelf for $12 that is just ready to go immediately. So, yeah. Fantastic. Well, why don't you tell everyone, because the one thing I don't think we covered is where you're here from. I mean, we all know you're Ryan. Did we even introduce you? The same we did. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Schneider, Crystal Beasley from uh, Wine Geek. And right. Yeah, so we're from uh, Food Geeks and Wine Geeks. Um, both are websites that are uh, dedicated to the geek in all of us, for people who like to geek out around the dinner table. Um, the, so Food Geeks is a uh, recipe sharing website with 10,000 recipes on it. And Wine Geeks is a, um, a wine review database that also has a lot of information about appellations and grapes and wineries. Mm -hmm. So um, both are a great place to, uh, to come and geek out a little bit. And Wine Geeks just relaunched, just right? Last time you right, were on, on Strange Love Live, you promised to launch by 30 hour day, and <laughs> in fact, you did, which is awesome. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to thank you guys both so much for joining us, but we've got more 30 hour day. We've got to like run Still hours to fill. We've got to figure some stuff out. We've okay. got some people waiting. Yeah. We've got producers I don't trust to put people on the right stages. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure what's going on. Although, Betsy's working on stuff. Okay. So let's, let's go see what's going okay, on. Okay, let's go check it out. All right, All right thank, thank you. you guys. Thanks, guys. All right, let's go over there. That's where all the people okay, are. Okay, we'll go that way. Let's we'll go. There's cameras. We're walking. There's a camera right there. Hey, you see what we're doing. Let's come over this way. Let's see what's going on. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hey, we're taking over. Yeah, is this where they put you? Yeah. Oh, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. No sleep. Her. No sleep till four minutes. Uh, no, my daughter sang that song to me, and she said no sleep till 30 hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah, okay. I kind of thought I would be when I said, come with me. I'm going to walk over and see the people over there. That's the thing. Hi, Finn. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I like your coat. Are you guys warm and snuggly? By yeah, we, just, we decided to go wore. twins for the camera. <laughs> Are you guys ready to do the whole thing? We are ready. Cool. Hello. Hello. Also, hello. hello. Oh, so hello. <laughs> Here I am. Hi. All right, well, I think we're just going to go sit in a chair okay. and let cool. you guys do it. Yeah, that sounds maybe good. Take a little nap Get out of the way. For 20 minutes. Yeah. Maybe. That would be a good go, idea. Go. I don't know. Is it a good change? idea? Maybe have a wardrobe change. You want to do a yeah. wardrobe change? I think, okay. I love that dress. That dress is amazing. Thank you. I have to go change it. <laughs> I like it. I like it too. A lot. We're live on the air too, so stop sucking. We are? Yeah, we're live, yeah. Are we? I'm just going to smooth out my coat one more time on the air, because that's nice. For We're twins watch. today. Hi, Hi, Internet. Hello, Twitter and 
Facebook and, and just Portland in general. And people who have no <laughs> electronic equipment but might be watching. <laughs> yes, just by the magic of their own eyes. Out in the window, there's a big crowd <laughs> in the window. It's like Rockefeller. Hey, Portland. Hi. Okay, Hi. so we are Melissa Lyon and Frayne Masters from Back Fence PDX. Yes. And Back Fence PDX is a live storytelling series here in Portland. We do our events every other month at the Mission Theater, and you can find us at backfencepdx.com. And the way it works, it's a lot like the moth or this American life. People get up and tell true stories, true. eight minutes, without memorization. Mm -mm. No. And they've never been told in front of an audience before. A lot of our stories are brand new. People um, have never told them to their husbands or their wives. And this is the very first time those people are hearing it, along with 300 other people. Sometimes awkward, but we like it. Okay. So Freen is going to introduce our first storyteller. Hi, um, everyone. Um, our first storyteller is Riley Michael Parker, and he is a visual artist, and he is starting his own internet talk show, so this will be on the internet, so maybe you can just change channels on the talk show and find Riley Michael Parker there. Please welcome Riley Michael Parker. Let's hear it. Come on. So... When uh, the year after high school, I lived in Ridgecrest, California, which is a terrible little town uh, in Southern California. It's a, a little desert town, and um, it's a little it's a little ways from Death Valley. Uh, to let you kind of know how it is, there's a Navy base, and that's about it. There's a Home Depot now since I've moved. Um, but the way that people play slug bug, where they hit each other when a Volkswagen goes by, we used to play tweaker on a bike. And there were a lot of tweakers on a bike, so we hit each other a lot. Um, but I, I didn't really have any friends in Ridgecrest. It's not really a town for me. Uh, there was a lot of people who thought I was a faggot and a queer, and uh, they didn't like the way I dressed or the way I talked or looked. Um, the, the first apartment I lived in, I tried to get a roommate because it was too expensive, and I made this flyer, this really great flyer, and trying to get someone, and it had a picture of Ike Turner, like, pulling his cheeks up, because everyone loves Ike, and um, like David Cross, and it said things like happiness and satisfaction, because I was advertising what a great roommate I'd be, and I had my pockets pulled out to show that I had no money, and um, I was really hoping people would respond to this, like I'd get like a slew of responses, and have like my hand pick of roommates, nobody responded, not one person, uh, but I was walking home from work one day, and I passed the Denny's which was like a really hot spot in this town. <laughs> it's an awful place. And uh, I actually heard someone say, there's a faggot with a flyer. Uh, they weren't yelling at me. They were just, everyone talks loud. Um, but yeah, I was miserable. I was having a really bad time. And so I ended up having to lose my apartment and find somewhere else to live. There was this uh, guy named Dan, Dan Gardner. And uh, we weren't friends. I didn't have friends. But uh, we'd known each other because we took a film class. And he had a room open because uh, he was dating this girl, and he decided that they were going to move in together, or they decided, and then they broke up right before they were going to move in. But they decided to live together anyway, which is a terrible idea because she started fucking someone like a week later, and uh, he was just miserable. So she moved out, and I moved in. And uh, it, was, it was nice. We got along. Um, but... Right after I moved in, maybe two weeks, uh, his ex-girlfriend slash ex-roommate died in a car crash. Uh, and all of her friends and her brother, they still really liked Dan. Like, he didn't do anything that made them upset that they broke up. And so our house became, like, the place to grieve. And all of these people would come over, like her brother and uh, their friends, and they would all sit around and talk about her and, and all the good times they had with her. But I wasn't part of this, and I didn't know who she was, and I didn't know these people. But they were all at my house all the time. And so I started making, like, half friendships with these people. And we weren't actually real friends. They were just at my house, and they liked to play Halo and, and uh, have barbecues. Um, and I would bum them out, talking about movies they'd never heard of and putting on Ween and just depressing the shit out of them. And um, I actually held them hostage once. They, everyone came over to play Halo, and... And I put on, I wanted to watch Magnolia. And they didn't want to see it, absolutely not. And I was like, let's just watch the first five minutes, uh, which is like the hook of the film. So I put it on, and everyone was really into it. And um, then I, they had to sit through the three hours of mopey sadness, which is the best part of the movie by far. Uh, but, they, but they hated me. 
um, except for this one guy named Derek. Derek had a lot of family problems, which I could kind of relate to. I had some family problems. And so he got kind of got kicked out of his house, and he was staying at my house. He'd sleep on our couch. We had this, like, awful pleather couch. And uh, he started staying over all the time. He was kind of like our mascot or our pet. And we didn't like him all that much, but he was friendly, and he was always there and willing to play video games. And so we kind of got used to him, and we were excited that he was around. And one day I came home from work, and he wasn't there. And I was a little worried, and so I, I just kind of laughed it off. And he didn't come home that night, and the next day he didn't come home. And then the day after that, and we, we made jokes about making flyers, like, missing Derek. And we left milk on the porch. Um, we didn't do that. But anyway, so uh, I got a little worried. A couple weeks go by, and I go into a grocery store. And this is when California was doing this, this whole um, – all of the unions were, were really mad. And so they, they were, like, revolting. And they, you weren't supposed to go to the grocery store. You are supposed to eat fast food and, like, say, fuck you, Albertsons. Um, but I needed some groceries, and so I went to the grocery store. And this kid, who I used to feed every day, uh, is there in line. He's, he's, like, bagging groceries. And I was like, Derek, I haven't seen you in weeks. Like, where have you been? And he was just so full of himself and just a jerk about it. He's like, well, I got a job now, and uh, I bought a truck with a system. I've been just hanging out, banging chicks. You know how that is. Or maybe you don't. Like, really in my face about it. And I was just so angry with him. I wanted to, like slash his tires or like pee in his new truck or anything I could do. But I was like, no, that's too petty. Like the best way to get revenge is to throw a Christmas party and we'll invite all of our friends and then I'll give him a Christmas card in front of everybody and he'll open it up and it'll be a picture of me naked. Like that's the perfect, perfect revenge. And uh, so I, I put the plan in action. <laughs> I set a date for the Christmas party and um, I had this friend named Elijah and he was one of the few people that I actually got along with, that I was actually kind of friends with. Um, but he would pull out his balls and his penis all the time. He thought it was the funniest thing. He was this really fat guy, and he had a small penis. And we were 18. <laughs> like that's, that's a joke when you're 18. Um, so he would do it all the time. And so he was the first person I called. I was like, Elijah, I've seen your penis so many times. The least you can do is photograph mine. And of course he said yes. And... Um, so we didn't want to set up like a private photo shoot. We thought that was way too homoerotic and just creepy for us because we've been friends for a while. So we decided to do was throw a party and then sneak off from the party, which is way more homoerotic, <laughs> sneaking away. So, but we throw this party, and all of our friends are there, all male friends. None of our female friends came. Um, and we're drinking. We're having a good time. And then I decide to uh, I sneak off to ready myself for this photo. And I'm in the bathroom. And the, the photo is going to be myself wearing a hat. I have, like, this detective hat from the 30s and a scarf. I have a purple scarf. And then I have a gun. I'm going to hold the gun like this. And we're going to take the picture in front of a, a full-body mirror. That way you can see all of my front and my back in the same photo. So he gets the whole enchilada. And um, so I'm, like, readying myself for this. But, like, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, if you know this, but some boys fluctuate in the size of their penis and I'm one of those boys it's not rocks you know awesome all the time uh, sometimes it's less than awesome so I wanted to have like a half erection I didn't want to be fully like but I wanted to be like halfway there like a half beef and so I was trying to think of things that were sexy but not sexy enough to be aroused and I, I tried to think of like what it was so I could tell you and share but I've become a lot more perverted since then. So all the things that may have kind of aroused me back then are like our full-on erections now, like Monica Lewinsky and her panties eating a sandwich is like the fucking hottest thing in the world. But back then, half arousing. So I'm thinking of these things, and our friends are just drinking in the next room, and I'm just looking in the mirror, like really sad with myself that I can't achieve this erection, half erection. And um, I'm kind of getting there. One of our friends... He was raised in a Christian household, and so he has all these issues. And when he gets drunk, he does this character where he's like, I'm Satan. Ah! And he, he thinks it's really funny, and it kind of is funny. And uh, so he starts doing this voice, and which is hard to maintain an erection through or get an erection. And uh, he actually, I hear him from the other room, I hear, Satan's going to fuck your asshole. 
And uh, that really throws me off. And then two moments later I hear, you called Satan's bluff. And I'm not exactly sure what that means. Uh, but I have an idea of where he was going. So I finally get there and I'm beefy enough to like take the picture. And so I, I grab my friend and I'm like, hey, let's do this, do this real quick. And we go in the other room and I'm in front of the mirror and I have the gun. We're taking pictures and he's just cracking up, which is not what you want to. Like, this is the first time he's, yeah, he's my male friend, but he's the first time he's seeing me naked and he's just laughing. It's not really good for my ego. And um, so I, the thing that I had to do is I called my girlfriend and had her take the pictures, which I should have done in the first place. Uh, but that's not where my mind went. So we get the pictures and they get them developed and that's a whole to do. Uh, the lady gives me dirty looks. But I have these pictures of me naked, like with a gun, and it's, it's really awesome, kind of. And I got double, so I had two of them. And um, I'm actually going to throw the party. We're having the Christmas party, and I'm going to give them the card with the, the picture in. And this is what it's all been building towards, is I'm going to give this guy this picture, and he's just going to be disgusted and appalled and turned on. And um, so we're giving out Christmas cards and stuff, and I go to give him the card, but I stop because I look around the room and I realize there are all these really attractive women uh, that I want to see my penis in private. And I know that he's going to show everybody the picture. So I think of my, my, my penis, and it started this night as a good pre- Christmas present. You don't see it until you receive it. And uh, so I didn't give him the thing. There's this girl there named Jenny. She was the main one. She was this adorable lesbian. I've always had to think for lesbians. I like androgynous women. And... Um, uh, she didn't care for me at all. <laughs> but before this, I knew this other woman who and I uh, was a lesbian, and she um, told me that I was the smoothest guy she ever met. And I didn't know if she meant cool like Fonzie or soft and smooth like a woman. But either way, I thought it was a compliment, and I thought I could woo this other woman. But I didn't give him the picture. There's still one photo of myself naked with a gun. So if you email my old friends from high school, I'm sure you can find it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Dave. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Hi, Beth, Brian, anyone else who may be watching? Who knows? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about poverty, and um, not so much real poverty, but I'm actually going to talk about the, um, the general perception of poverty and really how it relates to the self-perception of poverty. I was in a place where I um, was thinking of myself as fairly poor, back when I was in, um, it was 2001, 2002, I was living in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And my idea of poverty, um, well, there's there's this notion where you think you're the poorest person in town, but chances are there's, you know, the person standing next to you on the bus or whatever is, is probably somewhere lower down on the economic scale. So I was in a place where I had been laid off from a job, actually fired, and uh, I won't go into that in too much detail because that's a whole other story. Um, but when I, was, um, when I was laid off, I went back to being a janitor. And I had been a janitor all through college. And when I stopped being a janitor and took the job that fired me, I, my famous words were, I'm never going back to being a janitor. Suddenly I was back. And I had to work a second job in order to, to have enough money to take me back up to where I was from the crappy job that laid me off, which wasn't paying me that much anyway. So you could see where this kind of poverty consciousness was coming from. Um, so I was working about 60 hours to make around $20,000 a year. My wife was working 70 hours, and she was making a little bit more than I was. The reason that we were uh, working so much is we had, we had three things we were trying to accomplish. First one was um, we, were, we were going to get married. We were engaged, and we wanted to get married. We were living in Wisconsin. Our families were in Pennsylvania. We weren't going to get any support for the, for the wedding. So we were trying to save money up for this wedding that we wanted. The second thing was we wanted to get out of Wisconsin, and we wanted to come to this uh, mythical place called Portland, Oregon. So we were literally just working, putting our money in the bank, and, and pretty much forgetting that we were making any money, uh, and just keeping out enough to just buy groceries and things like that. And so we developed this, this, this really strict poverty consciousness. We have no money, so we didn't go out much. Um, you know, we talked about how little money we had and how we, we couldn't do the things that we wanted. The third thing was we wanted to go to Africa. So, I mean... How poor can you actually be if you are a white person living in America talking about going to Africa but complaining about poverty? Anyway, so this, is, this was my version of poverty. 
back in 2001, 2002. Um, and I worked with two folks in the, um, I worked in this restaurant as the janitor. It was like a, a five-star restaurant right along the Milwaukee River. And, um, and they were really poor. And I want to talk to them, uh, talk about them a little bit. First, the first person was this woman named Roberta. Roberta was in her uh, mid to upper 60s. She had essentially worked almost every day of her life since she was 13. She had two just atrociously bad knees that she had to literally ace bandage up every day to make it through work. She had a second job. She had two adult sons who were in uh, prison, in and out of prison. And um, Roberta's concept of a good month, and this, this totally... Uh, introduced me to a whole other way of looking at the phrase ends meet. Normally when you hear, I want to make ends meet, you talk about E-N-D-S-M-E-E-T. Roberta's definition of ends meet spelled it E-N-D apostrophe S M E A T, And that's because at the end of the month there was this really swank German sausage place. And the last day of the month they would sell the ends of the meat for half price. And if Roberta made enough money at the end of the month, she would treat herself to ends meet. And she wouldn't say anything about this, but the, the, day, the first day of the next month, you would come in and there'd be an ends meat sandwich waiting for you. Because Roberta was, um, as poor as she was, she never talked about it, but she just gave. She gave whatever she had. So um, you knew R Roberta was able to pay bills and have a little money left over if you had an ends meat sandwich the first day of the next month. The other person that I worked with uh, at, at the same job was a guy named Gilbert. And Gilbert was uh, very much like Roberta's sons. He was in his 40s. He was in and out of the penitentiary system. Um, he was a really awful diabetic, by which I mean he didn't take care of himself. Once a month, he would go into a diabetic shock at work, um, which, which means we would have to call the paramedics. Paramedics would come. They would say, um, you know, we're not doing this anymore. Next month, they'd come. We're not doing this anymore, so on and so forth. Gilbert was also, the job for Gilbert was uh, a job that he got when he was getting out of prison. He was in a halfway house, and, he, um, and then he got this job as a kind of a work release thing. And so he was very proud of this job. He was no longer in a halfway house. He'd gone on. He was, he'd gotten married. He's living with his wife. And um, so Gilbert had a lot of pride around the job, had a lot of pride around um, you know, just how much money he had, which was, was often very little from what he told me. Um, you know, he, uh, Roberta and Gilbert worked every day, uh, and when I left and took a job at the ad agency, they had nobody, they had no third person, so they didn't have a day off for, for almost a year, and then I came back so they could have a day off. Um, so in the time that I was gone from the agency and then came back, Gilbert had gone from being really high in life and, and feeling pretty good to where he was starting to go back down. Um, he had been taking less and less good care of himself, so he was having more shocks. He was the, he'd gotten in trouble a couple times for domestic violence, and he was actually on his way back to the halfway house. So when you hit the halfway house leaving prison, you're doing pretty good, but when you hit the halfway house coming from uh, the apartment that you're sharing with your wife, you're, you're moving in the wrong direction. So Gilbert was doing pretty bad when I came back. And previous to... Um, Previous to my coming back, there was a time when Gilbert called me in the middle of the night and asked, um, you know, I need, he needed a ride, he needed a lift, and he needed somewhere to stay. So I picked him up and uh, drove him around, and, and he, was, he had so much pride. He would never ask for money, but he, he would let you know that he needed it in his own kind of quiet, prideful way. So we're driving around. I'm like, well, you know, where do you need to go? And he points to the house. And I was like, do you need any money? And what do you need? And, and he said, uh, you know, whatever you got. And I, you know, I just pulled out a, a, a wad of money without thinking that I'm ever going to see it back or anything like that. So that was the only way you'd get Gilbert to ask for help. So I go back to work. And as I said, Gilbert's not doing so good. And he and Roberta aren't getting along so well. And I'm, in my mind, I'm very poor. So if you found something at work, you, uh, it was kind of, they would make your day, right? You'd have, like, you'd find a $5 bill or a $10 bill, and suddenly I could go treat myself to a breakfast that I normally wouldn't because I was trying to save all my money. And I was locked into my little poverty consciousness. Um, so I used to work in another job where if I found money or if someone found money, we would always share it amongst all the janitors because it was some sort of, like, blue collar, you know, we're all in this together. At this job, I wasn't able to share because Gilbert had too much pride. And so a couple times that I tried to find, or a couple times that I found money 
and would try to share with Gilbert, he would, he would have nothing to do with it. So um, one day after work, Gilbert asked me to help him move. He had to move out of his house and go back to the halfway house. So I helped him do that, and we loaded all of his stuff up in, uh, in a series of trips back and forth up the steps and back to the halfway house and going back and forth. And, um, and we finally had everything loaded, and it was just the, um, everything he owned in the whole world was, was piled in garbage bags and was sitting on this single cot. And I just got a, I got a really interesting perspective to see just what it is that made him feel comfortable and how he sort of graded his worth was just these piles of things that in that moment he didn't really care that much about because he was, he was just going downward and downward in his emotional state. So the next day I picked him up from work, or I picked him up for work, and he was, he was really uplifted. He was uplifted to have been out of the house, and he said he slept well for the first time, wasn't fighting with his wife. And so that, I, was feeling, I felt good for him, and he was feeling good. And we went to work, and I was mopping around the floor uh, in the bar area, and there was a $20 bill sitting right underneath the bar. And I thought, today's, I, I'm going to go get breakfast after work. Normally I wouldn't, because I got this free $20 bill. But then I thought, I'm going to leave it, because I, I really kind of want to split it with Gilbert, but I know he won't take it, so I'm going to leave it, and maybe he'll find it, and then he'll split it with me, because I really want this breakfast. And... Um, and so I go out and I do something else and I come back about an hour later and the $20 bill's gone. And I'm like, all right, and then I see Gilbert and he's just, spirits are high. And, and Gilbert had a really, uh, Gilbert and Roberta were both very Jesus oriented. And um, Roberta kind of had the concept that Jesus was always there. So she had Jesus with her at all time, kind of in her back pocket. Gilbert needed kind of, um, um, he needed the Jesus that only showed up in miracles. And then he remembered that he had Jesus with him. And so the $20 bill was like a gift from Jesus. So Gilbert was now by then, you know, kind of singing hymns and, and church songs for the rest of the day. And, uh, and I'm thinking, I really wish I had half of that $20 bill so I could go for breakfast because I'm, you know, in my little poverty consciousness, I can't just go, you know, swipe my credit card. And, um, but I'm not going to say anything to Gilbert, and I'm not going to ask him why he's so happy. And he's not going to tell me that he found a $20 bill. So, um, so after work, I give Gilbert a ride home. And I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where I kind of want to mention, hey, you know, have you found anything? I, I wanted to try to get the conversation to a place where he was going to admit to finding this $20 bill and to see if he was either going to share it or what. Because not only did I have poverty consciousness, but now I have some greed coming up, and it's like, well, that should have been mine anyway. And, um, but I don't, I don't go there. I don't say anything. We're driving. And we get to a red light, and there's a traffic island, and there's a homeless guy on the island. Uh, with, you know, with some poor sign, some poor cardboard sign. And Gilbert says, uh, roll down the window. And I roll down the window, and he reaches over, and he gives the guy the $20 bill. And, and then he says, um, and he's just looking straight ahead. He doesn't even look at me, and he said, it's rough all over. Uh, or we all got it rough. It's bad everywhere. And uh, that's Gilbert. That's the story. Thank you. Thank you. Dave Jarecki. Dave Jarecki from Backfence PDX. Thank you so much to um, 30 Hour Day. You guys are doing an awesome job. And here are the beautiful and talented Cami and Rick. Hi. Hi. We're running up on our last couple hours, so you know, I don't need a mic. You're, you'd be amazed where I can hide these things. Thank you guys. Thank you, Backfence. Woo, it was lovely to have you. Well, now what do we do? Well, now we're all We've dressed. We've got the Christmas tree. To go or sit down there. Where are we going to go? I don't know. Are we going somewhere? Should we sit in the seats, or what are we doing? Or just stand? No. Hey, Why would I get naked? Have you Nate? seen my dress? Did you see how long it took me to get dressed? Have you seen how long it took me to tuck this microphone in? Yeah, uh -huh. funny, funny, funny. I, sorry, I just grabbed your microphone, didn't I? <laughs> I'll show you. I'll I was trying mic. to be like, oh, it's okay. They're not making fun of you, but instead I was like... Oh, it's the microphone. I don't know. Are we supposed to sit? We can sit. What are we supposed to do now? We want to sit. Do we want to talk to Don from Yelp, maybe? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We might have a little fight or flight response with Don's <laughs> costume. It's a little There's scary. No See, here's oh. it. Oh. 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 I heard you guys are a little tired. tired. I already oh, sat on Santa's lap once today. Oh, how nice Very of goodness. you. That's oh. awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Santa. Yeah. You've been good. 30-hour day. Well, we've been Donating trying. to awesome charities. Have we been good? 
oh, reasonably yeah. good throughout reasonably the extent, good. given the whole thing. Have you been good? I've been pretty good. Yeah, do I've you want to sit down? I do, sure. Why don't you sit well, down, yeah. Santa? No, no, no. Take a seat, and I'll take this you one. You want, yeah. Oh. I got this one. Let's just, yeah. Oh, Santa needs the mic? I can talk loud. Oh, I'm sure you we could, Santa, 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 but that's okay. Could talk into the mic. We could let you have a microphone. Oh, thank you. How have you been, Santa Don? Well, you know, I've been busy. I've been real busy. Yes? I've been making busy. your list? Yes, making my list, <laughs> checking it three times. Yeah, you're a I very am. thorough Santa. I am. I am. I don't mess around. No, I appreciate yeah. that, though. I like order. You know? Which, despite the name, I, everyone thinks I don't, but... Yeah. I'm order, order and chaos, you know? It's important. You must have both. both. Yes. Without one, the other cannot exist. No. No. So, what made you decide to come down here, Santa? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm out there making my last list, and I, I'm trying to find the nicest kids out there. And I heard that you were raising money for Toys for Tots and the Oregon Food Bank. That's true. The free that geek. That and I thought that things. that was pretty damn nice. Aww. And so I figured I'd come yeah. visit to make sure that this wasn't some sort of sham operation that you weren't just putting us on. No. no. But no. it looks legit. I, you know, I'm here to represent. As legit as it can be it's, in a giant real. cement yeah. space with yeah, lots of yeah, lights yeah. and cameras and Keeping microphones and yeah. vodka. It, well, the vodka is here, vodka. so in the last two hours, <laughs> it's time to get saucy. <laughs> it, 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 it just might be. Yeah. I didn't realize that it would be, but you know, first they're plying us with wine over there. I yeah. saw that. Yeah. I saw that. It's and now Santa more. is plying us with vodka. I know. I was kind of hoping somebody was going to bribe me with wine because that guy well, looks naughty as hell. But well, you know. and yeah, he is. Yeah. I and could get him to. That's all good. Oh. Santa gave us a gift early, actually. He did give us a gift early. Would yeah. you like to tell them what the gift sure. was? The, the Portland Yelp dedicated, gave us some advertising and some mm -hmm. featured posts that helped drive a lot of traffic to the site. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you very much for helping with that. You have been well, very good. I just, I just linked it up with the Yelp team. Santa, yeah. Yeah. you've been very good too. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. That's awesome. Well, it really helps. You know, Yelp is all about keeping it real and keeping it local and building community, and community is what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. You guys trying. are supporting your local community. Yep. You're getting them engaged. You're getting them out of the norm. And in these hard times, you're really uh, helping them to supply the their rest of the community that's in need. So that's, that's what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you. Heck yeah. Santa. Right Santa. You're welcome. Yeah. Aren't you hot in that? Really hot. <laughs> we should probably, we should yes. probably give Santa Don a chance to Do you have something to change into? Well, yeah. Do you want to stay and hang out with us for a while? Yeah, sure. I'll stay and hang out. Why don't you go get something? Slip into something more comfortable. All right. Okay. All right. I'll do that. All right. Here you go. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. We got, there you go. Okay. Kind of had a Santa beard mishap. And he's off. Should we go get prom photos taken? Yeah, let's go get some prom photos. Let's go get prom photos, photos taken. Have we got a camera? Have we got a, we got a we got place a for our prom can photos? Us? Is, can someone, can one of the cameras follow us while we go get our prom photos taken? Please? We've I got a prom a photographer course. here. I think I'm okay with that. I don't okay. like things touching my wrist, right, so fine. depend on me. I already have, you know, maybe this could be my corsage. I have a microphone. <laughs> that works, right? The microphone's quite a cute corsage. I thought so. I thought it might be. Okay, Mr. Prom some, Photographer. Yeah, yes. some hideous holiday theme. They really should. Episode. We could do it in front of the pie. Well, we have we've got a Christmas tree. We do have a Christmas tree and a, a poinsettia. But look at these fantastic lights. Yes. I know. So we should be, we're on these two. Someone just has to tell me where to stand, because to be honest, I've done enough decision making okay, for one day. Okay. Right. Yeah. Hawkley's used to directing us. <laughs> you guys yeah. do this. What about hmm? You get that thing? We could do that. Yeah, we've got the lights. We've got here. two prom photographers. They can each take their exactly. photos. You guys are getting a little look into what happened when Hockley was shooting our our publicity, our promo photos and stuff. Yep. <laughs> oh, see, I keep putting my hand on his microphone. Okay. Is that what we're supposed to do? Is this the? It's like the paparazzi. <laughs> You, you better take a photo that makes us look good, yes, though, because we're not getting dressed up for you again. How many photos, photos have I posted that make, have made you not look good? Those have been the private. Whoa. Oh. I don't like to think about that. <laughs> I'm sure. He's not talking about the envelopes he drops off on our doorstep. With These will be posted to Flickr if we don't receive so much in small bills. I thought those looked pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's uh, rotate around and go against that. Cut. Great. That might be interesting. 
So we don't have to do publicity photos for next time, right? That's right. They're we all done. We can use these. Yeah? The tux photo, the, the gown photo. Look, you gals are correcting. Oh, it's the sassy pose. Wait. wait. I'm waiting for someone to instruct. Forward about a foot and then left about a I'm just kidding. You guys put him wherever you want to put him and then I'll go. Next to Rick, you have to like him for another hour. It's not much longer. Or an hour and a half, two hours. It's okay. You've been nice to me. I've been trying. You've been, you've been a good job. Soon. Steph can have prom photos, too. Steph can come into the prom Someone photo. needs to mic Steph. Can someone mic her? Thank you. I'm, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so not. Next weekend is Christmas. I have to pretend to be a mommy. No, I have to pretend to be a mom next week. That's, I don't think my kid is like recognizing me as a parent anymore. Okay, that's good. Are we stalling? Yeah, okay. probably. That would okay. be what people call it. Yeah. Egal would like some stalling or, or taking photos or something. I don't know. We're not drinking vodka. We're, we're not, not drinking vodka. Yeah. We're not yeah. going to the opposite. Yes. What? So I don't cover up your oh, uh, cut out thing. And this this dress is uh, Ann another Ann Bocci. Stepping all over each other. The photographers are having like a photography <laughs> battle. It's fantastic. Should I smile? I'm trying to smile. But I, got my, smile I got my cheesy tired smile. <laughs> yeah, it's the, like, uh, what time did you get up yesterday, right? Yesterday? Yeah, what time did you what was yesterday? What was yesterday? Was that Friday? Friday or Saturday? What day is it? Today's Friday. Saturday, right? It's Saturday. I got up at six. <laughs> so, uh, I got up at six. Yeah, I got up at five. You got up at five. You were up at five. Yeah. Yeah. So you're at about 36 hours. Actually, you're at about 40. close to 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. So we're getting close. Yeah. So why didn't okay. you just do the 40-hour day? We were thinking, oh, that's a really sweet photo. I know, I'm so trying. I was the trying to. 40-hour day is next year. That's what I heard. There we go. I'm trying to look. I can't look for <laughs> I too long. I can't do much longer. I'm going to laugh. Because you're doing the like cheesy, sincere thing. <laughs> I know. It's really good, isn't it? 40-hour day is next year. Um, that's we've already, right. We're going to, by the time we're done, it'll be a 40-hour day for yeah. us. We're just not. We're not, yeah. not going to, you know, mm. we're just going to do it no. upright. No. Yeah. Can we do one where I'm like smashing his face? Or punching me. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good, okay. good action photo. Yeah. Quick, because I'm going to hit him soon. Yeah, she can't resist <laughs> the urge to oh, wow. smack. Oh. oh, that had the blow, too. Oh, nice. I was shot. very careful. I was very careful. You can't even see a mark from okay, my Okay, good. Ring. Excellent. Can't even okay. see. It. Should we go right. do something now? Let's go do something. This is our last two hours to, to be Let's in this space. Let's go get in our chairs. Let's go get in our chairs. I'm going to go. so excited when you get Yeah. I know. I can hardly wait. Hello. I'm be so excited. To so let's get in our chairs. And uh, and then maybe someone will tell us how much money we've raised. That would be great that if somebody be, could figure out how much nice. money we've raised. Can we, can we have someone tell us? Oh, I'm going to go backwards. Oh, careful. I think maybe someone should get rid of... Oh, we have cupcakes. We have cupcakes, too. Look at that. Okay. Oh. Yeah. No, I get to sit next to Rick. That's kind of how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I'm too this tired. Is a big boy chair. I to be agreeable. <laughs> yeah. All right. There we go. Should we? Stop? Hello. You know what I think we should? What? Are you chewing gum? I don't have any gum in right now. I need to. Get my gum. Oh. Let's figure out what we need there. Here. Let me just get this. Get you. Right at. Put that in. Give me that. Ah. <laughs> All right. Good. I'm tired so of ladylike. Excuse me. I didn't want to spit it in your hand. That is polite. It's polite not to spit things in your hand, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So how long have we got to go? What's All going right, so on here? So people, here's the thing. We want to know how much money we raised, and I think Please. in the, in formal wear we're not allowed to touch the laptops. Yeah, I forgot my iPhone in my other pants. <laughs> did you? I did, yeah. Really? Yeah, it's unfortunate. You didn't put them in the wash or anything, did you? Yeah, no. Not since I changed. I see Steph. So, oh, she's getting mic'd up. Getting mic'd up. Get ready to change the lower third. Hey! Steph's going to be here, too. Can I come out now? You can yeah, come yeah, out. Yeah, come on out. You can come out, and we can bring out the piano bench for Dawn, who's no longer dressed as Santa. Yes, but still has a Santa hat. Hi, sweetie. You 
look beautiful. Thank you. How are you guys holding up? You know, right now, I've got just adrenaline. Yeah. Woo! It's because I've got such a pretty date. <laughs> because you what? I have such yeah, a pretty date over here. He really looks deep. lovely. Right. You haven't... Okay, so I watched yesterday. Uh -huh. Yeah. And... I know that there was the no punching Rick rule, but gentle shoves were okay. Yes. yes. There, there were certain games people were playing around. How, how many, many times, times came I hit punched me? Oh. I haven't ever actually damaged him. So I how, how did today go? Because I missed it because I was tied up with stuff. So I was so excited to come down and see how it was going. Three thousand two hundred ten dollars and the Excellent. twenty dollar bill that Woo. is in my pants pocket somewhere. Woo. Yes. Very nice. Probably with my Very and that nice. doesn't include auction items. Right. So the auction last we checked. The auction had, had earned about $700 as well, and that was going purely to free geeks, so that puts it right at about four, right? Close. Yeah. Close so to four. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, today went really well. Yeah. It was just really, really long. Well, okay, so I'm, yeah, I'm curious. Long. Like, tell, well, of course, because you've been up since. I like this. She's going to ask us She's going to interview us. That's yeah. great. I am. I, I actually it. have a lot I of I love questions. it. I yeah. love it. Okay, so since I missed the overnight stuff, was there some shenanigan in particular that was completely rock solid awesome that I really should have stayed what up to see? What's your favorite? You know what my favorite shenanigan was? What? I don't, I don't want to embarrass him. Oh, when Glassby crashed the party? That yeah, was the best part. Yeah, my favorite part was when Glassby, hey. Hey, Sweetie, Jason. come over here, please. Come on, one more time, for old time's sake. Come on. Hi, come here. What? Steph asked us what our favorite shenanigan from last night was that just made the evening. What was that? It was when you came and joined us on the sofa, and my favorite moment by far was captured on, on, on photo <laughs> by Mr. Hockley there, and is on the uh, Flickr page somewhere where you and I were trying to style Rick's hair for him. Yeah, that was good. Like that. <laughs> he looked so handsome when we were done. Really? Yeah, yeah he see, did. I really did. Yeah, I wish I could have gone out I've and been done styling something, his hair. but I had to hang with you guys. But it looks fantastic. Well, right now, it's kind of on its last legs. So I can't... There's only so much you can do with product. There's only so much you can do with product. It does it and looks better than it does. <laughs> your hair is... You know, I swear I lost big clumps of hair at this event. You know what it it's was? It's the stress of not sleeping. No, it, you know what? It's the powder brushes. How, are, <laughs> the hair is pushing the same. my no, hair further and further. The, they're the same color as your hair, so ah. it's actually just... So the, when you get in the shower tonight, you're going to have fistfuls of hair. It's going to be that, like a muddy or river from her powder of brush. just yeah. powder mm -hmm. running out. That'll be great. You know, it makes you look more distinguished, though. More Thanks. Should I start wearing this work? Don coming over too. We Should need. Where's the piano bench? <laughs> Don't you, Natalie? What? Hey, whoa. I saw your tweet earlier. Oh yeah. Don. Yeah. You have Santa beard in your beard. Yeah. That's awkward. I told eh? Don to come over. Yeah. Well, just we, because we it's like a. Piano a bench. Okay. I'll send it. <laughs> it's like, like a beard. <laughs> right? Favorite time. You were. You totally were. I loved it. It, it made me very fun. happy. It was a lot of fun. It was great because it totally, we had a bunch of planned stuff, right. and to have oh, something yeah. that broke that up, especially at that point in time, we where we were it. starting to get really, really we tired, needed to have some it was fun. great. Yeah. I, I promised myself I would crash at least <laughs> once and get on stage without my permission. <laughs> nice. Oh, you're going oh, to Oh, okay. nice, Don. Well Perfect. Done. Nice. Sorry about my poor placement. I, I think, I think, yeah, but you, we were happy to have you. So I don't know that it counted as not having permission because no, we were. I think it probably made it all we, the way we liked intense. having you there. We wanted to keep you. It was so good. Next time you'll be a scheduled guest, mm -hmm. a scheduled crashing guest. Okay. Yeah, you'll, schedule you'll your still crashing. crash. Okay, and I'll but, I'll plan a little later in the night too. When things get really goofy. Yeah, and thanks for the Santa outfit. Jason was also yes. the one who loaned us Jason the, the Santa outfit. Jason loaned us the Santa Rick outfit. Did it get yes. used? I didn't get to see that. It did. That yes. thing is hot. I don't know how you wore that. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> what you were doing wandering around in that thing. It's crazy. It was cool that SantaCon two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. It was one of those hot or like sunny cold days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I wore mine two weeks ago in San Francisco at the Yelp yeah. party with 3,000 people. Uh -huh. for three and hours. you regretted it uh, <laughs> by the end? So I... Did you get like a second and third wind, or how does it? How do, I've never stayed up this like long 10, in my life, so I'm really 11. curious, like <laughs> what it feels like. We had a yeah, lot of wind. We had a lot of winds, and we we could. So go it comes through. around, and then you kind of wake up, and you're like, I can do this, and then all of a sudden you crash yeah. again. You know okay. what? I can do this. Uh, what we figured out is, uh, when we're on camera, we're fine. Okay. Because we're up and we're doing what we've got to do, even yep. if it's just babbling, yeah. we're fine on camera. Yeah. It's just when when it goes to something else, and we can kind of just sit and relax, and we start to lay back a little bit, then we're like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. That I can appreciate. Do you become the wind beneath each other's wings? Sing it. I don't sing it. <laughs> but I'd love for you to. Not I mean, a chance, I mean, sir. No way. I'd have to be so uh, in an drunk. altered state. <laughs> I didn't want to There's say that. No, that's Don right. did bring us something. So someone did. Someone did. Oh, thank you, Papa. <laughs> 
He's got a microphone. Um, someone did offer to bring us all a glass of Prosecco. Oh. I wouldn't. Awesome. I love Prosecco. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I, wouldn't I wouldn't say no to a glass of Prosecco. That would be great. You're in the home stretch. I know. We are. It's what? easy for me. We could fall asleep and people would still forgive us. I think. I think. No, but you, you can't though. You're so Did close. You schedule sleep for the last hour. Like, no. the last yes, that's hour. the most. That's the entertainment you know for the last hour. And, and I think. I think asleep. Stephanie's going to be really sad. We scheduled us to be a wreck. And for Stephanie to come in and manage us and keep us from hurting each other. Then, yeah, but then he put on his tux and I put on his, my dress. And, and you're being so civilized to each other. It's I know. lovely. I'm not even mad at him. No, it's good. It's really good. Uh, Although I will tell you, yeah. I will tell you that when I walked in, several people came up to me and said, they're really cranky. They're really <laughs> cranky. Now that depends. No, it depends on whether or not you're telling us to reschedule a segment that we had carefully scheduled. <laughs> Here we go. See, and I've done it now. Depends. I brought it. It also no, depends if, if you're saying, okay, we need to reschedule it, and we've decided that this is how, and we're like, no, that's not how you're going to reschedule it. You have no idea. That's an hour-long segment. You can use it as filler. <laughs> hour-long segment. Gah. 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 Keeps getting new mics out of nowhere. How does this happen? I think so I wonder because you know yesterday. Santa I don't think you're plugged in. Pulls it out of his bag. Here's another in. one. I'm not joking. That's my. I know. I met him. He's dad. lovely. Yeah, thank you. I like him. He's actually also, uh, aside from his other duties, 384 viewers. Hello. All right. All of nice. you. Aside from his other duties, he is also the one responsible for delivering Rick and I both safely to our homes That's this right. evening. No, I was going to say, because there's not, no way should you two no. be driving under no. any circumstance. No, ever. I shouldn't be driving. Ever? ever anyway. <laughs> You're like, ever, ever. There, I don't drive. No. No, but no, no, yeah. no. What about crying? Has, have we gotten Rick to cry yet? Not, we've got, not, we've we gotten tried. close. So are you, yeah. are you but even tears of joy? Yeah, yeah, yeah are you? pretty easy, yeah. yeah, generally. I mean, I figured mm. there would be something set me off. But I took care of that while we were off. So, that, so there the was tears. something. So you did you did cry. You just I'm didn't not cry. Saying I'm not saying I did. Is it when Megan Kate said I had pretty lashes? It was. I was kind of <laughs> offended where I was like, dude, <laughs> I've got the prettiest lashes on you this do. set. You, you do, except for maybe Megan Kate. Uh, that's true. Her I lashes. can't compete Yeah, Megan, Megan Kate, Kate has these awesome eyes. Yeah. Yeah. She, I, she's just hanging on. Hi. Hi she's hanging on. She's doing great. Yeah. She's been here all See, I told her, I said, you have to have the powder. The lipstick, the brush, and the lint roller, and you just have to have them. And that was all for me. <laughs> and then you need some stuff for Cammy too. Yeah. I just I put on 20 coats, and I figured since I'm just a guest, <laughs> I can just wander off and then wander back. And you guys won't mind. You yeah. can wander. Totally, it's totally cool community. at this point. Yeah, it's cool. So, it's fine. So you brought the vodka. I don't see you drinking it. Not that I advocate this. I, I think we're waiting for the Prosecco. Yeah. And if the Prosecco doesn't come, then we'll figure out what's in there. You know what? I we will can have mix a the vodka with the Prosecco. Yeah, that, is, that champagne and sparkling wine is a definite weakness okay. of mine. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe that offer was revoked. That might happen. Maybe it's is there maybe, Prosecco? Maybe they drank all of it while we were getting changed. What? Quite uh, possibly. Is there nice. Prosecco? We're offered Prosecco. 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 I didn't get any alcohol. I think the, I think the crew, <laughs> why don't we, can we get the, can we get the production alcohol? shot? Where's my alcohol? Hey, the production, production shot? stop. People. Hey, Steve. What's the crew doing right now? Hey, where's the production hey shot there, Pete? Hey. hey. Yay. Yeah. Oh, I love that <laughs> yeah. shot. Woo! Yeah. 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 They got, got all sorts of booze over there. All right, where's the Prosecco? Yeah, where's the Prosecco? You know where's what? The, why don't I go take care of this? <laughs> shall, shall we? You're Thank welcome. You. I can get Thank this done, and I will be back in a flash. Watch uh, your mic. I will. I will be very careful. I can just detach you and clip you back in when you come in if you want. You got that? There you go. That's usually the best way to handle these situations. I like being wireless. This is my one thing that I've liked the most about this event. We're not getting yelled at we by Dr. Normal for dropping them and pulling the mic. We make it yelled at for muting ourselves so that well, we can say inappropriate out. things. It's yours. It's yours now. So that's me. I'm careful to mute myself. Yeah. Uh, so that when I say nasty things, no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> also, I like to mute myself before I use the ladies' room. That's good. That's well, that's kind of cheating. Nice. No, it's, 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 it's being polite. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. You are very welcome. Oh, hello, Prosecco. What, what, you, what you got there, dude? Um, I think it's uh, a summons for uh, Scott Tucker. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Well, we should get that to him. It must have come, awesome. You must heard have it come here in the mail first. first. I don't even... That's fine. That would be great. Oh. Oh. Do you want mine? No, no, no. no, no, no. Sure? Yes. Thank you. Very sweet. Your contact I'm crying. No, I'm not crying. 
pretend. Wait, I'm Why crying. Why won't you oh, cry? It's Ooh, it's yeah, fancy. it still looks fancy. Yeah. Why it matches you, the tux. Why won't you cry for me? You know what? <laughs> You've got my glass. I thought that was my lipstick. Oh, maybe it is. Okay, well, fine. Guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop off because you guys are doing All so right. good without me. Okay. I don't even know what's happening. Thanks for swinging by, dude. Thank you. It's, it's you guys are like in the home yeah, It's yeah. like flavor yeah. flame tree right behind you. How close are we? Uh, you have two hours. Two hours. You have okay, two good. hours left. So two hours. We can awesome. do two hours standing on our head. And Jason, thank you. And to I would all like the, to see to two all hours guys standing on your head. That would be impressive. Not in this dress. It'd be like well, actually, yeah, that would be a little bit. Oh my gosh, I can't. Yeah, thank it's you. The best. Thank, you. thank you for yeah. letting us rip the hell out of your workspace. Good. Well, we really appreciate it. And we all really appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Really. I mean, for the kids. It is. And the geeks. Think of the children. The kids and the geeks and the would-be geeks. Yep. And yep. people who are geeks. Yeah. Yep. If you get the kids geeky toys, they'll grow up to be geeks. Yeah. Exactly. Kids exactly. Geeky turn out to be geeks. That's right. What was that? What was that nerdy? Um, uh, help oh. the needy get nerdy. Help the needy get nerdy. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Help the needy the get nerdy. I would Power love to hold that for you. We went with red wine. I was like, oh, prosecco, red wine, fine wine. Whatever. Just give me a glass of something. Yeah. Don, would you like something? Um. Yeah. You know, I might go for myself. Yeah. Something. Why don't you go find something? Come back and join us. That'll be lovely. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, they oh my are. goodness. No, yeah, those they are, are amazing. beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, these are my, wow. my sassy Check pants. Those out. Mm-hmm. Goodbye, goodbye. Bye, Jason. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, the story, if I may tell it, behind these shoes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I would love to hear it. Um, I went to Vegas, and I'm actually not a shopper. Mm -hmm. Not good at shopping. I don't typically enjoy it. Things don't fit me right because I'm a little curvier than most. You know, so I just, I struggle with that. I have never enjoyed it. So I'm in Vegas and I spy these shoes at Nordstrom. And I said, they are coming home with me, which is funny because (laughs) I flipped them over and they were a ridiculous amount of money. Mm -hmm. I would never in a million years pay that kind of money for shoes. So I left, well, I left. They're they're not they're not they're actually those Cole Haan shoes with oh. the special Nike technology inside oh. that makes them really comfortable. Oh, nice. Yeah. So but so I walk away and I think I'm done and then I go and I have a couple drinks and all of a sudden shoes sounded like a great idea. Next thing you know, <laughs> I'm the proud owner of a $400 pair of shoes. Great. They're, they sit in between your feet. Uh, I'll tell you those shoes. I won't ever do it again. It's I'll wear them for 50 years. Those shoes so I can't are worth $400. Thanks. They're Thanks. beautiful. So anyway, I love Absolutely them. They come out for beautiful. special occasions and this. Cheers. Cheers. Is a very special occasion. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Done. Chink. Chink. Yeah. So. Oh. What? You. Oh, I almost got did, Misty. I? Yeah, Wait, yeah. what? No, oh. I didn't. Oh. Yeah, he that got. That was a fake Misty. I was making. No, it was not. All right. It's you know, close. Yeah. what do you what do you think? Do you think you'll? I realize that it's tough to look at next year when you're still kind of in the fog of slumber and just wanting a she break. She thinks but, it's going to be like all the way next year. Yeah. She really? thinks we're going to wait. I've missed, so what have I, I've missed something because I'm no. curious. We haven't, we haven't disclosed any information. So no, can we disclose But there may be here? one happening sooner than next Very year. Very sooner. Yeah. I would love to if you'll consider having me with any help or volunteer or anything oh, you need. I would, would love be awesome. to be part of it. Love to have Absolutely. Part of it. Because I think that you're really onto something with this. We and just, I, it's just a pleasure to be here. It's kind of a high. I mean, not yeah. the actual not sleeping part, which obviously is, but just even the planning stages of this, knowing that we could do something. And I think with more uh, thought and more planning and more than six weeks yeah. and a little bit of experience <laughs> behind our. You need we to do it do once to figure out what kind of work Correct. and what this is kind really of working helps out the you. Kinks right. And. Yeah. There were a lot. I mean, we. How's the audio <laughs> been? People in the chat room, has the audio been okay? The because audio, when I was watching, that was obviously that was a big struggle in the beginning. The chat I was like, room I can't, may have been I shut down. Hear. I'm not sure if it was open mm. back up. Mm. Yeah, we had some. We went. Issues. We went almost the whole time, no issues at all. Yeah. And then at the very uh, end of the variety show, we had some trollage. Okay. And so they well, it's just, easy. It just yeah. shut it down. They just decided to cut it out. Yeah. So. Well, we can yeah. check on Twitter and see how if people are that's having true. audio so, issues. Because someone on Twitter check and. Oh, so my dad's audio was fine. My dad, <laughs> my dad was watching last night and this morning uh, okay. from his condo. So. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, I've been watching. I was watching that. What I had trouble yeah. with was people on the mics, hearing people on the mics, yeah. and, and there um, were hot mics when there shouldn't have been, and cold mics when there should have been hot. Yeah. Did it's I say anything? Cool. I it takes that. a little <laughs> sorting out, you know. It really does. I said some things. We said some things. Maybe some things. Time. Were you cranky then? We got cranky and uncranky on a regular basis. I don't. Cami, I can see having an opinion and being like, no, you know what, this needs to. I just, you, I don't see in that role. 
I, do, I get a little bottled up and then I get she real cranky all at once. No, I'm not caught. I'm calling Cammy the alpha. Yeah. Oh. Cammy's the you alpha. You certainly do, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> Because if you have us in a room with 100 people, yeah. that's definitely how it goes. If you have us in a room with just the two of us, that's not. Well, and, no, and that's not the case. We've spent the last more than 30 hours with these people. I mean, you yeah. get a little, like, you get not a only little, do you get a little loopy, you get a little comfortable with everybody. That's what makes it get, fun. Yeah. Correct. And, and, but when you get comfortable, then mean things are said. Yeah, yeah, and then people think you're cranky. And then you yell at Uncle